Hello and welcome to this screencast where we will explore how to configure Google as an external identity provider using Zitadel, enhancing access management through identity federation and brokering. Google is a popular choice for an external IDP due to its wide adoption and robust security measures. It's trusted by millions, making it a preferred choice for users. It offers strong security measures to protect user data. And Google is continuously updated to support the latest security standards. So integrating Google with Citadel allows organizations to leverage these strengths, providing a secure and user-friendly authentication experience. Now let's talk a little bit about Identity Federation. Identity Federation is a system that enables a user to access multiple services or applications using a single set of credentials authenticated by one trusted identity provider. So this is where a user would log in with a single set of credentials and authentication will be performed by a single IDP such as Zitadel or Google and access to multiple services or applications will be granted to the user. Now let's talk about identity brokering. An identity broker is a service that acts as an intermediary, such as Zitadel, between multiple identity providers and service providers. It facilitates the authentication process by allowing users to access services using credentials from various IDPs, such as Google, handling the complexities of various authentication protocols seamlessly. So in identity brokering, users are presented with the option to select an identity provider of their choice. They can either create a new account with the broker or log in using existing credentials from a well-known IDP such as Google, Facebook, GitHub, etc. If they opt for the latter, the broker will redirect the user to the chosen IDP for authentication. The broker then manages user access based on whether the external authentication is successful or not. Let's now look at the process flow of identity federation and brokering, focusing on how Zitadel and Google interact using the OpenID Connect protocol. First, the user initiates login, for example, by clicking a link or a button that requires the user to first log in in order to proceed. Next, the SaaS app redirects the user to Zitadel's authentication endpoint. The user chooses to log in with Google. In the next step, Zitadel redirects the user to Google's OAuth2 server. This URL includes the client ID assigned by Google to Zitadel, the redirect URI where Google will send the response, and the scope which specifies what access Zitadel is requesting. Next, the user logs into their Google account if not already logged in. The user grants Zitadel permission to access their information as defined by the scope. After that, Google redirects the user to Zitadel with an authorization code in the URL. And Zitadel exchanges the authorization code for an access token and an ID token at Google's token endpoint. This requires sending Zitadel's client ID, client secret, and the obtained authorization code. Then, Zitadel validates the ID token to authenticate the user's identity. Zitadel creates a session for the user, logs the user into Zitadel, and may create a user record if one does not already exist. Finally, Zitadel issues and sends its own tokens that the SaaS app can use to make API calls on behalf of the user. Now that we've covered the theoretical aspects, let me demonstrate how we can configure Zitadel to implement this workflow. So first up, let's head over to zitadel.com. And uh, you will see that I'm already logged in because my name appears here. So what you need to do next is click on dashboard. However, if you're not logged in, you will see the button displaying the text start for free. So I'm going to click on this dashboard button and uh, you will be taken to the instances page. This is where you will see how many instances you have. And right now I don't have any. So um, instances are pretty much 
containers for your organization and each instance runs on its own domain. So you need to create an instance in order to create your organizations inside it. So click on create new instance. You can provide a name for your instance here and click continue. You can pick a username and password for your first user in your new instance. My username was autofilled for me because this is the email address that I used to sign up. Um, so now I will provide a password and I will click create. So I have successfully created a new instance and to visit the instance, you must click on that button and you will see that you will have to log in with that password you just provided. You can skip the two-factor authentication setup for now and you'll be taken to the management console of your instance. Right, so YoYo is the name of your default organization displayed right at the top here. You can click these arrows and also see all the organizations that have been created in your instance, which is right now just one. And there's also a shortcut to create a new organization in your instance. You can also click on show all organizations to view all the organizations in an instance. So again, here you will see just a default organization listed here. A default organization can be considered as the organization the first user is associated with. It usually serves your internal team. And for your internal team, security protocols might be stringent uh, with no need for external social logins such as Google. But if your organization is planning to launch a customer facing application for B2B customers, maybe for them, access to Google authentication will significantly improve the user experience. So you will have to create separate organizations in Zitadel for each of these B2B customers. So let's go ahead and create a new organization for one of your B2B customers. You can click on new and enter the name of your new organization. I'm going to call this Org A and click on create. So this separation of organization allows for customized authentication flows tailored to each organization's needs. So next we are going to do how we can configure Google as a social login mechanism for organization A. Next, let's take a look at how we can configure a user login for a web application via Zitadel. So let's go to the default organization to create a project. Why the default organization, you might wonder. Do we have to create the same project in the second organization as well? Well, the beauty of Zitadel is you can grant a project from one organization to other organizations. So we'll be creating this project in the default organization and granting the project to organization A, which is our second organization, after we set up an application inside the project. So let's go to projects in the default organization. Click on create new project. Insert a name for your project. Click on continue. And now we have to create an application. Click on the new button. So we can add a web application to our project by providing the name. And the type of application has to be web. Click on the continue button. Select Pixie because the authentication method is going to be authorization code with Pixie. And click on continue. OK, next we need to specify where the user will be redirected to after they log into Zitadel. I'm going to show this login simulation using Postman, and we need to provide a redirect URL for Postman here. So in order to get the redirect URL, you need to go to postman.com. So I'm already logged in, so make sure you are logged into your account. Go to Workspaces and create a new workspace. Select blank workspace and click on next, provide a name for your workspace and click on create.
Now you need to click New to create a new request. Select HTTP. And we have an untitled request here for us. We need to find that redirect URL or the callback URL. So go to Authorization. And uh, in this Type dropdown, you need to select OAuth 2.0. And go to the Configure New Token section and look for Callback URL. Yes, this is the one we need to copy. Copy that and go back to your Zitadel console. Paste it here and click Continue. You're pretty much done now. You can review the configuration and see if everything's OK. And click Create. So you will not get a client secret because we selected the auth code for Pixie Flow. You can close this pop-up and when needed, you can go to the configuration section to get your client ID. Now let's test the logging flow of our web application using Postman. Go to Postman and go to the authorization tab of the request and fill in the rest of the fields in order to perform the logging flow. The token should be selected as available tokens. The header prefix has to be bearer. And in the configure new token section, you can enter a token name. Let's call it token one, or you can leave it blank. The grant type has to be authorization code with Pixie. The callback URL cannot be modified, so you leave that as it is. And the authorization URL has to be taken from Zitadel. So in your test web application page, you need to go to the URL section. And there you need to copy the authorization endpoint and paste it here. The access token URL is the token endpoint, and you need to copy the token endpoint and paste it. The client ID can be obtained from the configuration section. Copy the client ID and paste it. We will not need a client secret because our chosen flow is authorization code with Pixie. The code challenge method has to be SHA-256. You can provide a code verifier or leave it blank. Let's provide random string here. And you will have to provide OIDC scopes or any custom scopes that you may need in your application. So I'm going to provide the open ID scope, the email scope, and profile. Because we will be calling the user info endpoint in this request. So I want to see the user's email and the profile information uh, in the response. For client authentication, you need to leave it as send as basic auth header. In the advanced section, you can provide additional parameters. So I'm going to provide the prompt login parameter. The OIDC spec defines the prompt login parameter to trigger re-authentication. That means if you're logged in already, um, you, you would still have to authenticate uh, in this OIDC flow. All right, so now you can click Get New Access Token to get a token, and you will be prompted to log in. So provide your username, which is my email address. Click Next. Now provide the password and click Next. If the authentication is successful, you will receive the token. You can click Proceed and click Use Token. And now you can use the token in your request. Now let's provide the user info endpoint. So go to Zitadel console, go back to URLs, and copy user info endpoint. URL and paste it here. Now you can click send. So now 
we are waiting for a response from the user info endpoint by using the access token that we just obtained. So this access token serves as a key to performing various operations within your application, effective for as long as the token remains valid. So there you go. That is a response from the user info endpoint in Zitadel. In the login process we've discussed, users could only log in via Zitadel using their email address and password. Next, we'll explore how to give users the flexibility to also log in with their Google account and receive an access token. Let's enable users in organization A to have the option to also sign in using their Google accounts. So select org A. You also need to remember that the Google login will be exclusive to users in organization A and users in the default organization will not have this option. So let's create a user who already has a Gmail address in organization A. So go to users and we want to add a new human user. Provide an email address, provide a username, a name, a family name, and a nickname. You can select the email as verified and you can set the initial password for this user. Let's go ahead and do that. And fill in the rest of the details. And click create. Now the user has been created in organization A. Now we have to customize the login policy for org A. To configure the login policy in org A, let's go to settings. You need to go to login behavior and security. And under login form, you must ensure that external login allowed is selected. Next, you need to select identity providers. And here you will see a list of all the IDPs you've configured, which is none at the moment. And you can see the available IDP templates over here. So let's go ahead and select Google. So to integrate Google as a login option in the Zitadel's Google Identity Provider template, we need to configure the credentials within the Google Cloud Platform. So this process is essential because it establishes a trust relationship between your Zitadel instance and Google. So start by visiting console.cloud.google.com, which is where you will manage access permissions and credentials for Google's APIs, including the ones necessary for OAuth authentication. If you haven't already logged into your Google Cloud account, you can then either select an existing project or create a new one dedicated to this integration. So I'm going to create a new project. Click on new project, provide a name, and create the project. Select the project. Now go to APIs and services. Click credentials and click create credentials. You need to select OAuth client ID. So this step initiates the creation of a unique identifier for your application, which is necessary for OAuth flows. So to create an OAuth client ID, you must first configure your consent screen. So you can do that. You need to choose your user type. I will select external and click create. Provide an application name and provide an email address. Provide an email address here. Click Save and Continue. Next, you need to add or remove scopes. You can provide open ID, profile, and email, and update. Click Save and Continue. We can save and continue without adding any test users.
and you can go back to dashboard. Now go to credentials again. Now that we have configured the consent page, we can start creating the credentials again. Go and select OAuth client ID. The application type has to be web application. Provide a name for your web application. And now you will be asked to provide authorized redirect URIs. Here you need to add the Zitadel callback URL. So this URL is where Google will redirect users after they have authenticated, ensuring the flow returns to your Zitadel setup securely. So click on Add URI. You can get the authorized redirect URI by going back to the Zitadel console and copy this callback URL to be pasted in the URIs field. After pasting the URL, click Create. All right, so now you got your client ID and client secret. Now let's copy the client ID and go back to the Zitadel console and add it here. We need to copy our client secret and add it to the client secret field. You can optionally configure the following settings. The scopes define which scopes will be sent to the provider. Open ID, profile, and email are pre-filled. This information will be taken to create or update the user within Zitadel. Zitadel ensures that at least the Open ID scope is always sent. We can go ahead and provide a name. If the automatic creation setting is enabled, the user will be created automatically within Zitadel if it doesn't exist. I'm going to select this to see whether a user who is not registered in Zitadel is also added to Zitadel. The automatic update setting updates the user within Zitadel. If some user data is changed within the provider, for example, if the last name changes on the Google account, the information will be changed on the Zitadel account on the next login. We can select that as well. The account creation allowed setting determines if account creation within Zitadel is allowed or not. And the account linking allowed setting determines if account linking is allowed. When logging in with a Google account, a linkable Zitadel account has to exist already. Either account creation or account linking has to be enabled. Otherwise, this provider cannot be used. Now you can click Create. You need to activate the provider by selecting the tick over here. You can similarly deactivate the provider and your users with links to it will not be able to authenticate anymore. And likewise, you can reactivate it and the logins will work again. Before we can move on to testing, we'll need to grant access to the project which includes a web application within the default organization to org A. Alternatively, you could create a separate project specifically for org A that includes a web application. So go to the default organization, go to projects, select test project, and click grants. Think of a project grant as creating a link to the project. You don't need to manage the applications within each organization, but only grant them to other organizations. Click New and select Org A as the organization to which you are granting this project. Click Continue. You can also add roles to this project grant. Uh, we did not create any roles, so I'm just going to leave it as it is and click the Save button and we have successfully created this project grant. Now go to Org A, go to Projects, go to Granted Projects, and you will see the test project available. You can click on it. You will see that you can't do any changes to this project, but only use the roles to authorize 
this organization's own users. We did not specify any roles, so you won't see any authorizations here. All right, now it's finally time to test our login setup with Google. So go back to Postman. This was the configuration for our previous request. Let's try it again. Let's get a new access token. And you will see that when we didn't make any changes, we get that same login screen. So we can log in with the username and password. You can click on proceed, use the token, and send that request to the user info endpoint. There you go, you get the same response. So now let's try to get the user to get an access token by logging into Google instead. So the only change we have to make here is the scope field. We need to add a reserved scope that includes the organization ID of organization A to our existing set of scopes. So that scope is urn colon zitadel colon iam colon org colon id colon and the organization id here. So go back to the zitadel console, go to the organization tab and copy the resource id here. This is the organization id for organization A. Let's add it here. And that's pretty much the only change we need to make. Now let's proceed to get our access token. Click Get New Access Token. And there you go. You will see a new button here, which will redirect you to your Google login screen. So let's click on My Google IDP, which is the name we provided as an external IDP. So we need to sign in. Um, so let's try to sign in as a brand new user that is not known to organization A. So if you go to the Zitadel console and go to users, you will see that we only have just one user who also has a Gmail address. But let's try to log in with a brand new account. Um, I'm going to go ahead with this user, click next, and provide his Google password. Click Next. We can skip the two-factor setup for now. And there you go. We, we were redirected to Postman, and the authentication is complete. We can use this token and see if we can get details about this user from Zitadel's user info endpoint. So click Send, and you will see that we receive this user's details, including name, email address, and other details. So if you go to the Zitadel console and refresh the Users tab, you will see that we have a new user added to Organization A. So this was made possible because we specified that an account should be created because we selected this tick box. So what if we try to disable this where we do not allow automatic creation, but we allow account linking instead? That means a user with a Gmail address must reside in Zitadel, but they also have the option of logging in using their Google account via Google, and they can link their account. So let's click Save. And see what happens if we log in using Jane Doe's email address. So let's get a new access token and this time use Jane Doe's email address. Now we must log in with her Google password and click next. 
Okay, so it says here that the external user is not found. And whether we want to link the user instead. So we can accept the terms and conditions here and click this link button. So now Jane Doe has to log in with their Zitadel username, which is janedoe.zitadel. Click Next and add her password and click Next. Because we created this user in the Zitadel console and because the user did not get a chance to reset the initially set password, she is asked to change the password in her first login attempt. So let's go ahead and reset the password. And click Next. So the password was changed successfully. Click Next and we are redirected back to Postman. We can click Proceed, use the token, and send the request to the user info endpoint. And you will see this user's details returned from the user info endpoint. So due to the password reset, we could not complete the account linking. So let's try to go through that step again of linking the Google account with the existing account. So you can actually see if this was successful by going to the Zitadel console. And if you go to the user whose Gmail account uh, that you're trying to link, you will see under identity providers that there are no external identity providers. If the account linking was completed, you will see the external IDP listed here. So let's go back to Postman and um, go ahead with clicking on Get New Access Token. Now let's try to log in again via Google. Choose the user's Gmail address. Yeah, so we need to go through this process again. Click Link. And let's add the details again, this time with the reset password. And now we got that user linked screen. Click Next. Now the authentication is complete. Use the token and you can send a request to the Zitadel user info endpoint and get the details of this user. So you can go back to the Zitadel console and go to identity providers and you can see that my Google IDP has been listed as an external identity provider for this user, which means their existing account and their Google account are linked. For our final step, let's check if the automatic update setting in our IDP configuration is working as expected. Technically, if the user's details change in their Google account, that change must be reflected in Zitadel after their next login. So let's open a new tab and go to myaccount.google.com and we are in Jane Doe's account. Go to Personal Info and let's click on Name. We can edit the name. Let's assume that she got married recently and wants to change her last name. Let's save the new name. Now let's go back to Postman and get a new access token because that will prompt her to log in again. Let's log into her Google account. You can see that her name has changed in Google. Click Proceed, use the token, and you will see that our previous response, her family name was Doe. Let's see if that is going to change now. So send the request to the user info endpoint in Zitadel. And you can see that the family name has changed. We can also go to the Zitadel console and refresh the user profile page. You can see that the change is reflected here as well. And that is how the automatic update setting for the external IDP works in Zitadel. And that brings us to the end of this screencast. I hope this walkthrough has shown you how easily Zitadel integrates with Google 
to enhance your access management. Stay tuned for more videos and thanks for watching.